Have you ever thought, why does my footage look so normal while the movies looks so cool and maybe even so insanely epic? Well, I'll show you how to do that. It's called color grading and you can do that in Clip Studio Paint with correction layers. Let's go. All right, so I got an artwork right here and to add a correction layer, all you do is go to your layers and you can click anywhere. You can click on your layer. You could click all over here and just go to new correction layer and then you have all these options and these are correction layers. You could basically think of them as filters that will go over your artwork. The awesome thing is it's its own layer with its own settings. It's so that means it's non-destructive to your art and you can edit them and re-edit them later. It's really awesome. Let's just start with the top brightness contrast and you might be familiar with it. You just up the brightness, uh, up the contrast. But when you use correction layers, there's extra things you can do by adjusting the layers opacity and the blend mode. So let's just make my art look bad by upping the contrast up to the max. And it looks bad, but now we can mess with things. We can change the opacity right here and we could change the layer blend mode. And this is something that is gonna take experimentation. You, you're gonna learn way more by just messing around with these things than you know, trying to study like a library of use this effect in this circumstance and, and apply this gradient. And blah. If you just mess with it a lot yourself, that's gonna give you the most bang for your buck. But there is a few blend modes that I think make more interesting effects mo more often than others. And those would be multiply, overlay, soft light, hue, color, and some more. You just gotta experiment. But moving on to the other ones, we got hue, saturation, luminosity, and that you could just change the hue to your image. And you could change the saturation and luminosity. Then we have posterization. That will take your image and try to make it in as few or as many colors as you put in this box. Right now it's auto, it's defaulted at eight. And if we put it lower, it makes the amount of colors in your image lower. Actually, this isn't the greatest example because there's not that many colors in it already. Okay, here's another artwork I've done. There we go. You can really see how it's like chopping things down to smaller and smaller amount of colors. But thing is, you can get some interesting effects by adding this posterization and then maybe just lowering the opacity down and just guessing around and seeing what different blend modes do. Like that looks pretty cool on soft light. It gives the image a little bit more pop, makes the magical parts more magical. Now I'm gonna skip to color balance because I think this is one of the coolest ones because there's something in art that I've always had trouble with which is making the artwork look like it's in evening or morning light. I always just, somehow it always just looks normal, like it's daytime. How do you make art look like it's nighttime? And I believe you can do a little hack with the color balance. So what this does is it gives you options to up different colors and it separates it between the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights. Uh, they call midtones halftone. So the halftone would adjust all your values that are in the middle. So the thing is, if you want to make it look like it's nighttime, moonlight is blue. So you want to up the blue in the shadows, up it in the halftone, and up it in the highlight. Like right now, it's actually pretty good. But you could also just max it out, push OK, and then just lower the opacity of the adjustment layer. And just like that, we went from like normal day to nighttime. And actually you might be thinking, oh, this is getting too saturated. So I, what I could do is add a new adjustment, new correction layer on top of that, go to hue saturation, just take saturation down. Yeah, the correction layers stack. And if you ever want to adjust the settings again, you can, you just have to double click right here and then boom, it pops back up. And then I could just put that blue down a little bit because maybe it is too much. And on the reverse side, here's a illustration I haven't finished yet, but I needed to make this look like more of morning feel. It just looks like midday time and I wanted morning. So let's go to color balance and up the yellow across the board. And boom, that looks more like morning than it was right here. So color balance was worth messing around with. All right, check this out. I was just messing around with stuff. Like I said, just mess around. Here's what it's like normally. But then after I add the color balance, what I did was I up the blue all the way up to the red and then all the way magenta. And that looks pretty crazy. That looks kind of like apocalyptic. Like if this was the epic climax of the story, this just looks really cool and apocalyptic. Then another one, let's look at binarization. That takes your image and makes it two colors, black and white. And there's a sliding scale for what it will take to what color. So you can just adjust this. And I thought this would be really useful if you lost your Clip Studio file and all you have is a PNG of an image and you wanna get your line art back. You could use this to slide it until you, you get it to where it's your line art, um, boom. Then you have a coloring page too. 
So the other ones we haven't gone through yet is the reverse gradient. That was just an invert. Lots of programs call that invert. Takes your color, does the opposite. And that's pretty cool if you mess around with it, change the blend modes. That's hue. Look how that did. Look at what that did. Wow. But you can get some really interesting effects with reverse gradient. Next up, we got tone curve. This is where you can, it's kind of like color balance, but you could just handle it a little differently. It's more in depth. So here on this chart at the bottom, this would be all your dark values at the top. That's all your light values. So if I go like this, if I just click on the line, you get an extra node, which you can bend and change the curve. If I bump that up, that's going to make it brighter. If I take it down, it's going to get darker. And this right here, we're on the RGB, so it's affecting all colors, but I can switch to red, green, or blue and just affect those. So I'm on red and I can up the red and the whole image will just get more red. But let's say I wanted only the dark parts to get red. You can do that here. And the thing is, I was messing with it. If you go crazy, you can start making some wacky effects. You, like if, if you had a comic where characters are trapped in a TV dimension, I would do this sort of stuff. Like, look it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> After messing with the tone curves like crazy, I got it to look like that. And it's just pretty cool. So just mess around with tone curve if you want to make it glitchy and then use invert as well. Then last up, we got gradient map, which applies a gradient to your image and your gradient has like a dark and a light side. You can actually change the color to whatever you want. But what it means is that it will affect your darks. Let's pick a gradient first to show you. So I made this one that goes from dark purple to uh, red peachy color. And so what it's doing right now is it's taking the dark values and changing them to purple and taking the mid values, makes them like purple to this peach color and then light colors are turning red. So if you push okay, obviously, it's obviously crazy right now, but if we change the opacity in the layer blend mode, we might be able to find some cool effects. That looks pretty cool. It's adding like a bunch of pink and brightness to the image. And then I think the last ones I haven't covered yet is a level correction and that will just change the levels. It's sort of like altering the brightness and contrast, but you can affect just the reds, green and blue. Right now we're on RGB. Let's go to red and we can see how it's making it more red. Or if we go and take this white and turn it to the dark, then it's taking out the reds. And then we can mess with these two and get some interesting effects. So overall correction layers are pretty cool. I would use them a lot for color balance. That would be the one I use most to make things get in the right hue and light that I want, like trying to emulate morning, nighttime, or evening daylight. And then I would use it a lot for like glitches and effects. If you ever have a character that's doing magic, try out correction layers. You'll probably get some interesting effects. And a last tip too, because art takes a long time to make and social media wants us to post every five minutes. So a trick you can do with level corrections is make some art, post it, and then a year later, do some correction layers on it and then repost it and then nobody will probably notice. All right, so that does it for this episode of Clip Studio Paint Tutorials. I'll see you next time.